time I get to continue play. Uh, don't know how long it'll be until I can get a whole video up, but we are up to a shit draw time. And we are excited about playing this game again. I think it's a union shit. It sure is. Now, do we have to, do we want to switch Hancock, who is over here on this road? It's a clown road. Oh, maybe, maybe he ain't here. Where is Hancock? Oh, what's to find out? Oh, you know what? Maybe his units don't come on yet. We'll be right back. Well, the reason they're not represented by troops on uh, board yet is because, historical note, this represents Meade's arrival on the battlefield, although he's not represented by a special command marker. So there you go. And I, I, I'm interpreting this as being maybe used on a turn four in place of any one Union command marker drawn. The drawn command marker set aside adds one die roll modifier to the command roll of that formation. Huh. All right, move from play, so I'm guessing. So the one we drew was this, and he'll add plus one to it. There you go. That'll work, and then we'll move him from play afterwards. So there you go. The first color drawn, and we will use the Hancock. Oh, we could use wait, use one another one. We'll have to see what's up. Maybe we ain't gonna move first core that much. Yeah, we might hold off on the old Hancock. And we'll roll for first core. No die roll modifiers. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do here. Ooh, and we made the right choice. Because first core moving the maximum of some good here. Ten movement points. First core will be right back. Alright then, taking advantage of his ten movement points. We have got an attack going on and we've gotten a high ground. So we'll be moving the combat marker over for the Union. We're going to have a couple of attacks on this one. But the key, though, is keeping in formation. And that is this unit here. He will be one, two, three from him. Oh, one, two, three. Well, hold on a second there. That's not right. One, two, three, four, five. Let me check this out again. I'll to be in command. He's got to be four hexes away. We'll be right back. All right, then. The correct spot would be right here. Four hexes away. Outside of a zone of control. One, going uphill, plus one. Two, three, downhill, none. Four. One, outside zone of control. Two, three. One, two, three. So everybody's correctly moved in. formation and what we wanted was a flank attack we'll get a modifier for that either that from four sides three different sides or something like that we didn't qualify for that but we can only qualify for opposite sides get a good modifier and that attack be back all right well higher elevation rule right here you can read it for yourself um, means that this group of units and this group of units will be attacking this and we'll get the flank bonus. We don't have to attack here. Alright, so we will have units running down the hill, choosing to attack them. And while they're bracing for the attack, they're getting come getting rushed from behind. Then we have this combat here. That'll take care of it. We gotta be a little quiet because people are getting ready to hit the hay. Go to work tomorrow. We'll be back. Alright, our first battle. Long Willow. B run. I guess that's what they used to call creeks back in the day. But we got it going on here with. Ooh. Let you read for yourself. Ooh. Stone. It's brigade. Pin. Raleigh. Going against. And we forgot all about the other artillery for Heath and Davis. So let's count up the attack factors. It'll be one, two, three, four. Oops, I'm hitting somebody. Should be hitting. It's because I'm doing it. Yeah, I gotta make sure I've got everything right. Versus a one, two, three. So it's a one to one on the marker here. Zero diagonal modifiers. Well, it help definitely helps out with the artillery because it'll make it two to one. So. 
The artillery is helping the Confederates big time. Loss limit, so every attacker has to roll. So there you go. We will roll, I guess, for the defender first. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay. You see here, Davis's. We're down here to Davis, and they have a tactical effectiveness of five. So there's one tough unit, five or less, to avoid a hit. There you go. Next one, a three or less. No dyro modifiers. Five, so he takes a hit, and he must retreat. The difference between a five and three is two. Have to go back. One, two. There you go. Oh, he takes a hit though. He's eliminated, I guess. Then. And oh, does Heath got any more here? Oh, hello, Pettigrews. Oh, Pettigrew. Okay. Well, then he'll be eliminated. We'll get a victory point. And oh, we will roll now for. Put that over here. Oh. Uh, Stone, three or less. Two, he makes it. Three or less for the next one. Rowley. Oh, Rowley takes a big hit. The step loss. So six and three. The difference is three. So let's go back three. One, two, three. There you go, there you go. That result results of the little battle at Willow B Run. There you go, nobody's still there. A couple of men retreat, or one was eliminated. So I think we get one victory point as the Union player for every, every step taken loss. All right. We will be right back, making sure we did this right. Forgot to give the Confederates one for their step that they inflicted. And this is the first step. So Confederate victory points go up two. So it is now eight, or rather three, seven, seven to three Confederates. Current victory points. All right. Ooh, what else we got going on here? There's a result of that combat. Mm, our next combat here. We move, we move some units on accident, so let's get it all straightened out here. And fortunately for the Confederates, we have artillery. Line it up here when we get right back. All right, before we go on, I had this Pettigrew uh, brigade. I thought it was uh, one of uh, these other brigades that was uh, a three-stepper, but it's not at Pettigrew's by himself, so when we brought in all these units, we'll just bring Pettigrew in, and if he uses that reinforced uh, march, he can only, he has to have a gap, so Pettigrew's back there. Not really a big game integrity mistake, but yeah, I, was, I had to move him over here, and uh, I'm thinking we were using him for a, oh, a step loss. We thought one of these units here were like three steps, but they're not. There's no other unit here with Pettigrew's name on it, so that's what gave me the insight. Okay, interesting battle along the old run. And uh, one of the interesting mechanics of this game is where you can leave units adjacent to each other, but we'll take care of that in the coming up retreat phase. There you go. When the battle ensuing and the difference, big difference, and although it ain't let, you know, adding too much is the artillery for the Confederates. Definitely having an effect. We'll be back. Alright, well sorry about that. Due to technical difficulties, here's the result of the attack and even with uh, minus two on the tactical advantage of the old O'Neill. He needed a one or less to come unscathed, and he got the one, you know, with a tactical or being flanked modifier. Uh, meanwhile, the old, ooh, Bagster Brigade suffered a step loss, giving the Confederates another victory point. 
So you have a total of eight versus three, five point lead in a game. We'll be back, let's straighten this out, we'll be right back. Another result that was bad dive roll was a six. And his uh, movement there, or his tactical effectiveness is three, so he'll have to retreat three hexes, but he has to retreat this way, and if he can't retreat that way, he's eliminated. He cannot retreat either way because of uh, zones of control. Now, if there was a unit here or here, then negate it. He'd be able to retreat there, but as it is, he's eliminated. I'm running out of battery. And they will get one more victory point. Ooh, four, five. And we gotta charge us up. We'll be back. All right, sorry about that. Little post battle synopsis. We are going to give medals to the O'Neill Brigade. They destroyed the Union unit that came from behind. Not only to destroy that unit, but they held off on the boys coming down the hill. So, old O'Neill. His brigade, Rhodes Brigade. Yeah, pin him with a medal or two. They'll get decorated for damn sure. That was a difference. Wow. All right. We will be back with some more great Clash of Giants Gettysburg game play. Phew. All right, that is it. Now we are all still within command range, so I'm going to go ahead and take these markers off. And we'll get ready for another chip pull. I don't know if we'll be able to do it tonight. I think we better not get too greedy. It's getting late. We had a great time with this game, though. Uh, score now, though, is with that unit five and four is nine to three. Confederate favor. Be back.